This is quiz 10, and in this quiz we were supposed to calculate a bunch of derivatives, but at the time all we had was the power rule, and we didn't have the chain rule, we didn't have the product rule or the quotient rule. And actually it's a good, it's a good thing to look at this after we've had all these rules, because sometimes it's easier to just go back to simpler ways of looking at a problem. First problem is pretty easy. The function is x cubed minus 4x plus 6, and we want the derivative of that. So f prime is simply 3x squared minus 4, and that's it. Okay, the second question, we were given this function, x squared times the quantity 1 minus 2x. Now, most people would look at this thing, I think, and say, oh, product rule, and just go first times derivative, etc., the second, etc., etc., which will get you the answer pretty quickly. But I think it's just as quick, maybe quicker, to distribute the x squared out and get x squared minus 2x cubed. And in that case, the derivative of this function, I guess we call this function g on the quiz. So in this case, g prime would just be 2x minus 6x squared. And you get to the same place if you use the product rule, but at this point you didn't have the product rule, so you really didn't have a choice. Okay, number three is one of these where you really should not do it with the quotient rule, even though it looks like it's a quotient rule problem. x squared plus 4x plus 3 divided by the square root of x. And now this just, for some people, they just don't think about it and they just go straight to the quotient rule. But really, folks, this is easier to think about if you think of that square root of x as x to the 1 half. All right. And then if you're dividing by x to the 1 half, that's the same thing as multiplying by x to the minus a half. And the reason I want to do this is that there's already a bunch of x's here and I can add the exponents with anything that's got the same base. So that means that y is really x squared times x to the minus a half. So that's x to what power? This is 4 halves minus 1 half is 3 halves, x to the 1 and a half power, plus 4 times x to the 1 minus a half, which would be positive 1 half, plus 3 times x to the minus 1 half. Right? Now this is just a little bit of algebra. You could get here another way. You could split it into three fractions, x squared over square root of x, and 4x over square root of x, and 3 over square root of x, and then change the square root of x to x to the minus x to the 1 half, and then subtract the exponents, and you're going to end up in the same place. But then dy dx, or y prime, can be calculated directly from here as 3 halves x to the 3 halves minus 1, which is 1 half, plus 1 half times 4, which is 2, times x to the 1 half minus 1, which gives you minus a half, and 3, let's see, the 1 half comes down, so you're going to have minus 3 halves x to the minus a half minus 1 gives you minus 3 halves. All right. So really the quotient rule in this case is not a good idea. You're going to get into denominator, derivative of this, minus denominator, times derivative of this, divided by that, and it's a lot more work. You do, you really should get used to doing this exponent dance um, fairly quickly. All right, next problem, we have to find the equation, find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the curve y equals x to the fourth plus 2e to the x at the point 0, 2. So to get the equation of the tangent line, to get any equation, you need the slope and you need the point. Well, here's a point. You need the slope and you can get the slope by taking the derivative. The derivative is just going to be 4x cubed plus 2 times the derivative of e to the x, which we know is e to the x. So that is the derivative, but that's the derivative at every point. 
We're not interested in the derivative at every point, we're interested in the derivative at this point, where x equals 0. So you just put 0 in for x. So the derivative at x equal to 0 would be 4 times 0 plus 2 times e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, obviously this is 0, so this is going to come out to be 2. So we can just write the equation now, y minus 2 equals the slope, which is 2, times x minus 0. End of problem. Okay. <clears throat> Finally, what value of x does the graph of this function, f of x equals e to the x minus 2x, Where does this function have a horizontal tangent line? Well, to be a horizontal tangent line means that the derivative would be 0. Time to have a horizontal tangent line because tangent line slope is given by the derivative. So we calculate the derivative and set it equal to 0. Notice that's not what we did up here. Here we calculated the derivative and we plugged in zero because we were interested in the derivative at a known x. Here we're interested in the derivative and asking the question where is the derivative equal to zero? So we have to figure out where is the derivative which is this guy. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of minus 2x is minus 2. Where is this equal to zero? So we have to set this equal to zero and solve. So keep make sure that you know what the question is. In this problem, we were finding the equation of the tangent line at this point. So we needed the slope at that point, at x equal to 0. This is x, this is y. At x equal to 0, the slope will be 2. Here, the derivative is given by this guy, and we're interested in knowing where is the derivative equal to 0. So we set it equal to 0. Obviously, that means e to the x equals 2. And we have to solve this for x. Got to get x out of the exponent, which means that we're going to have to call on logs to do that. And the easiest log to do, to work with, is of course natural log. So we take the natural log of both sides. So natural log of e to the x is the same as natural log of 2. And natural log and exponential function are inverses of each other, so the left side just reduces to x. So x equals natural log of 2, and that's the final answer. That's the x value where the derivative will be equal to 0. So if you actually plug in natural log of 2 in here, e to the natural log of 2 is 2, minus 2 is 0. It works. Okay, and that is it, unless I left out a problem. No, nope, I think that's it. That is it for quiz number 10.